Y'all, we're gonna have an old school White Bull Creations skull cleaning video. Check this ram out. He's kind of a he's kind of a mixed breed, kind of a Ramelay slash Jacob slash I don't even know. He's got a weird split in his horn here. He's got a funny flat shape. He's just a very unique, very cool ram. I'm gonna skin him up and we're gonna make him look beautiful. Thanks for watching. I wanna show you some of these cool ridges in his horns, man. He's, he's rad. All right, y'all, if you're new, welcome. If you're a return guest, welcome. If you're thinking what in the world, welcome. The reason I'm giving you a real slow look at this knife today because I swear by this 70 XT blade, you can see how it's sharp all the way around the tip. So whenever I'm working around, I'm cutting from both sides. This also keeps me from when I'm sliding up underneath the hide from shooting out. You know how a knife will come out, jump out on you? I don't have that so much with this rounded tip blade. First things first, you wanna skin whatever you're working on. Now this sheep was partially skinned, so I'm just gonna show you some up close looks at skinning and how that goes. Just pull your hide and where it gets tight against the bone, cut that web in the middle. Skinning 101, this is a fantastic place to practice. Take everything you can off right now. The knife itself is a Silverware IBK or interchangeable blade knife. You could go to silverware.com and find that knife if you're interested. Now you can see what a mixed breed this sheep is. You can see how he's got different hide on his face and a woolly back head, just very, very unique. Now remember, when you're skinning around the horns, you don't have to be super close. You just work your way around. Every critter's a little different. Don't expect to be a professional on the first one or the first 10. It's gonna take a few, just work with it. Remove that hide. I always like to remove as much tissue as possible. I'm a boiler, so anything you don't put in the boil just saves you time and energy. Remove the eyes. I take that 70 XT blade, I push it in the eye socket and make myself a little loop. That way I can put my finger in and behind there and pull and then just cut behind the eye and they'll pop right out. One more quick look. I know so many people think this is all clickbaity and just trying to get views and looks. It has nothing to do with it. There are so many people that are genuinely curious on how to do this process. That's the reason I share. So this is just the very ugly part of this beautiful process. It's just part of it. So if you don't want to see it, just simply don't watch. Otherwise, finger behind the eye, pull, cut, no mas eyes. Lastly, I'm going to remove the jaw by making a couple of cuts alongside the jaw. And then just with two hands, I'm going to hyper extend it backwards until the jaw pops off. And then I'm going to remove any loose meat that's hanging on there. And then I'm going to drop it right into a pot of clear water and bring it to a boil so that I can remove the horns from the horn core. It is extremely common around here to be doing multiple critters at the same time. So once it's at a full rolling boil on this particular sheep, it was in there for about 25 minutes. I'm gonna pull it out and I'm gonna hit it with a big heavy sand hammer on the top of the horn to shock it off the horn core. Remember everything is hot. So when that horn comes off and you grab it with the other hand, you may need something in between. I really like to use a sponge with a scotch bright part against that slimy horn core. It helps me hold it in place so I can hit the other side. Now, just for the sake of this film, I'm gonna leave the horn cores long so you can see how the core split and that's why the horn split. And that's why you have two horns coming out the bottom. I'm just gonna wash it all as is so you can see that everything goes back together kind of like a ring and pinion. 
This type of thing just fascinates me, and I don't know why. I love the finished product, and I'm just always curious of what made it do what it did. Either way, it's cool. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, I'm freezing it right here for reference. I start power washing when the skin on top of that nose splits. That's the thinnest area right there. With that split, I start power washing. Here's the rules. You want to spray into every hole and every orifice. Anywhere there's meat or tissue, make it go away. Let's get to washing. I'm running out of daylight here, so I'm gonna real quick flip over the skull and wash out the brain because that's where the spoil comes from first. And then I'm gonna just soak it in hot water overnight. Leave it be, I'm gonna pick it up the next morning. Next step, I'm gonna stick a screwdriver in his ear canal. I'm gonna pop out the auditory bull. There's so much brain and tissue that grows in and around this. If you remove it, you can get it clean. Once I've popped it out, I take a 5 8 wafer bit and I drill it around in there and make a nice, clean, smooth hole. This makes for a beautiful finished product and it gets it extremely clean. With a pair of long forceps, I remove all of the nasal cavity. And then if I can't finish the skull directly, I always keep it hydrated. So I'm gonna fill up the sink and soak this skull until I've got everything else ready to be whitened. Last step, I'm gonna boil this skull in a mix of hydrogen peroxide and water. I use one gallon of aqua silk and three gallons of water the link is in the description. I bring it to a boil, make sure everything's in contact, and then I pull it out and rinse it clean. It should be brilliant white and grease free. Once everything is clean and white, I set it in front of a fan overnight to dry. From there, I give the horns in and out a coat of mop and glow, and then I mop and glow the skull, and then I'll dry fit the horns to make sure everything fits. In about 10 minutes or so, I can put the horns back on the horn core using like a five minute epoxy, Bondo, whatever you got, let it dry and then look back at that finished product and say, dang, that's cool. All right, that's it, all done. This is the uh, mixed breathe gram. I don't know if you could see it when I was mopping glow in those horns, but they has, he has the coolest black lines in his horns. Is anybody watching True Facts by Zay Frank? He does one called uh, the Chameleon or Chameleon. And he talks about the Chameleon having cool karate chop hands. That's what that reminds me of right there. If you haven't seen it, actually go click on True Facts about the Chameleon. That's it, man. Beautiful ram. Remember, skin them, 
boil them, power wash them, color them, mop them, glue them, glue them back together, and uh, be thankful for the opportunity to be able to hunt and fish. Thanks for watching.